Hello and welcome back to FS Derek. Um, we are going to be in our B200 King Air Caronado in uh, X plane shortly. I just thought you might like to see a quick bit of flight planning. Uh, I don't know where I left you last. I think probably left you in Iceland. I had a plan to bring the plane back from Iceland to um, to South End, and uh, in fact had seven burly Icelandic blokes in the back who wanted a lift um, because at South End the um, airfield is very convenient for the train into London. You just walk across the road and you're at the train station. But I had to drop them off in Edinburgh, so they were less than chuffed about that, as you can imagine, <clears throat> because. Um, I put four hours worth of fuel in and although I had a 60 knot tailwind for the first half of the journey it dropped off to nothing for the second half so there was no way I had enough fuel to make it all the way back to um, South End so I had to drop into um, Edinburgh. So I'm in Edinburgh at the moment, that's the flight plan that I lodged, you can see the last one, um, Reykjavik to uh, Mike Charlie which is South End. So I'm going to need to do, we'll do a PDF and an X-Plane FMS uh, and I'm departing from Echo Golf Papa Hotel, Edinburgh. Destination Echo Golf, Mike Charlie. And Mike Charlie's in the the sort of the current air X cycle. If you put Mike Hotel in, which is Manston, Manston is shut, so you have to choose a previous air X cycle to get Mike Hotel to show up. But at the, on this occasion, um, we're going to Mike Hotel, so they'll be fine. Um, that's the um, plane loading in the background. You can hear. The steps bonking down there. So there we are. Beechcraft Quinn. We don't use SIDS, we can't use stars because the flight planner in the uh, Caronado doesn't cope with those. And we just create a plan. Now the objective really is just to create a plan that we can load into the um, into the plane. If you go right down the bottom here, that that's the route we're going to be flying. And um, we go to the files and we can click on the FMS and it will ask us where we want to um, download it to so you need to know where the um, where the um, files are located and in my case it's on E and then uh, program files 86 Steam Steam apps common x-plane and then uh, is it output I think and then FMS plans and there we are and we can we can file it in there how are you supposed to know that I don't know I mean obviously you can google all this but just to let you know that's how you load a plan in and it's going to be Papa Hotel to Mike Charlie when we load it so let's get the old plane guy well let's um, shut this down and click on the plane and here we are I don't know where we are we might be in Reykjavik there's a story behind this but I'll get the I'll get us off the ground first so let's go to um, location um, select global airport yeah no we're at, we're at Edinburgh that's good isn't it and we'll save runway 24 I uh, don't know what the wind is the wind is uh, two knots in uh, from uh, zero five zero, so we want a runway that starts with a five, don't we? Really? Um, what have they got? They've got a runway six, so that's all right. There we go. It's the same runway. We're just up the other end. Okay. So let's get this party started, and I'll tell you what uh, what happened. Battery on. Um, beacon on to uh, warn everyone we're about to start the plane. Beacon's the um, orange thing that's flashing away on the back there. You can see this is, uh, we still haven't had the plane uh, painted yet. I'm going to get that done soon. So we'll clear away the um, bollards. Sometimes the bollards come out and sometimes they don't and the chocks, I don't know why. And we'll shut the passenger door and get rid of those and then go to our pre-programmed view and we're going to start engine number two first so engine oh I put the, <laughs> put the battery on open put the starter on let's just cut the uh, what's it and there we go give it a second I'll just 
don't want to wind this, I don't know, I shouldn't have touched that because so we get a, like a high pitched um, tone on the recording card if we um, muck about with the volume levels once we set them up. So yes, yeah, and about seven hundred pounds worth of fuel, which um, will be plenty to get us down to Manston. We'll just wait until we get into the green arc here on the prop before we do anything else. So generator on number two, starter off, starter on number one, wait till it spools up. And uh, give it a bit of fuel. There she goes. So we've got a generator on, and we're not going to shock load the electrical system. So that can uh, we can turn everything on now. Go to the overhead, turn the lights on. It's just not raining. It's usually raining when I fly. Something must be wrong. Starter off. Generator on, learning lights on, don't need the taxi light, nav light on, recognition on, strobe on, oxygen on, going to be cruising at 24,000 so um, I'm going to dial in 24. Now some of the stuff I did on my last trip <coughs> you won't hear because the it was lost. My Ava Media card filled up my hard drive because I was recording on the SSD, and because the flight was three hours long, <coughs> it crashed because it couldn't um, cope with running out of hard drive space. <coughs> Excuse me, which was annoying. So I'm, I'm going to cover some stuff again. Um, one of the things I did cover was uh, let's go back down here was the the rate at which we pressurised the cabin. And I had it pressurising and depressurising at 500 feet per minute, and I've changed that down to 300 because it was depressurising too fast, really. Um, let's go to the. Um, let's just click and drag that up to get it out of the way. So we're going to let's uh, go back, go back here, and decide what altitude we're going to clear ourselves to. And um, that's with the wheel. I can click and drag perhaps to get that a bit quicker. So that it does. Yeah. There's a there's a gun there's another little sort of buggy feature on this plane where and I'll just show you where if you drag the um, the altimeter setting you can you can get it to sort of the nearest ten feet. Whereas if you do it with the mouse wheel it goes to the nearest hundred feet. So if you want to get it exactly to uh, around 100 feet, you have to drag it until you get it to some number of 100 feet. It's incredibly frustrating. And, and really only necessary if you're a perfectionist. I've got it to 10 there, so I can do 10,010 or 10,110, whatever. It will be 10 feet out, which is a bit of a pain, but that's, that's just a little... Uh, minor sort of bug that no one's picked up in the old beta testing. So what have we got? 10 degrees Celsius outside so that's fine. So we're initially cleared to 10,000 now we just need to put the flight plan in. So we go to the flight plan, we push uh, no, we go to um, we push the cursor, no we go to the next one, that's it. And then we push the cursor don't we? No, we just go up and down. No, we must push the cursor. Perhaps we just use the small one. Oh, come on. Don't tell me there's a bug where you get full up with flight plans and it won't select one. Please don't tell me that. Is it clear? Have I got to clear something? 
let's try the other one. That works all right. Push that. Pop our hotel Mike Charlie, and then enter. Flight plan. There we are. That's fine. So what's wrong with this then? Oh, it's decided to do it. Papa Hotel Mike Charlie. Enter. Let's get rid of that. Flight plan. And then the second page of the... Um, come on. You can do it. Second page. So obviously we're, we're setting off south, aren't we? Which again is reassuring, seeing as we're... Um, Yeah, so we're taking off to the northeast and then immediately turning south. So what I'll do is I'll put the heading bug on south. Which is 180. There we are, that'll do. And uh, we'll clear, we'll put ourselves in the air climb and we'll make it a uh, 2,000 feet a minute climb which again it won't do, so we'll do 1,900 and heading bug, but we'll leave the autopilot disengaged because we will um, engage it as soon as we take off so uh, we usually um, just do one quick click on there just to make sure that that's working, that seems to be working fine so there we are, I think everything's fine isn't it? everyone happy in the back? Weather, um, I'm not really worried about the weather. Oh, I'm going to load the real world weather, why not? Come on. Environment, weather. Download right now. Hopefully, there'll be a bit less cloud. No, it's still pretty cloudy, isn't it? It's pretty cloudy. Hopefully, it'll be a bit less cloudy as we go further south. Yeah, look at that, pretty cloudy. Okay, and then the last thing we do is set the QNH, which is 29.85. So just dial that in, we should be on the ground shouldn't we, 29.85 7, that's 8, so is that 8.5, it's a bit difficult there we are, 29.85 and we're all ready to go so, hold it on the brakes take it up to about, I don't know, 1500 torque And then when it uh, starts to run away with you, you can give it its head, and off it goes. You have to um, steer it on the rudder quite a bit, just to get it going. That, that's the wheels off. Lovely. And climb away at 120. Gear up. Now you can bang the old autopilot on pretty well as soon as you reach 300 feet, but so it's a good idea. We want to keep the talk about 1900. Notice I was concentrating on the instruments there well before. Um, we went in the cloud. And now, you have to click it twice for some reason. But we should go to a 2000 feet a minute climb and, uh, and a right turn onto this heading. And we need to keep the torque on 1900 and something. There we go. It looks like we might be just about on top of the, the cloud already. Yeah, that's good. Let's put the um, yoke back. Got our clock back, it's 3.51, so it might, might be getting dark when we arrive. I don't know how long it's going to take, we'll find out in a minute. So we're flying clean, so I don't mind climbing a little bit faster than normal. We should be climbing 120 something or 130 something. Now, here is us having taken off and turned south, and this is the line that the, the sort of the flight plan is. So if I tell it to fly not on the, um, the heading bug, but on the GPS. So let's click that on GPS, 
and then we have to go down and tell it to fly um, on nav and I'm expecting it to make a right turn to intercept this line so it's doing that now that's good so all is well on the navigation front I'm going to assume that we're going to be cleared to something like flight level 170 and we're over 3000 feet now which is the transition altitude in the UK so we'll want to put this up to 29.91 or 1013 millibars or hectopascals we'll keep the landing lights on below 10,000 feet good yeah, so we lost all the um, Iceland to um, Edinburgh portion of the flight, which is a real nuisance because, um, let me just turn the plane down a bit, because I know from my own experience uh, we don't, you know, it's annoying when you, the plane's buzzing away in the background and you don't need to know that the plane's flying, we know the plane's flying, if the engine stops I'll tell you. So, um, yeah, so... <clears throat> Unfortunately, as I say, it just ran. I was recording on the SSD, and I'm sort of vastly, I was just vastly over optimistic about the amount of space that I had to record video on. So SSDs are never empty, are they? They're always full or nearly full. So let's. Uh, so what I did was um, I did a little bit of a tut. No, nope, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, all right, all right. Things are digging. Forgot to turn my phone off. This is um, let me just turn my phone off. airplane mode. That's how realistic this simulation is. You actually have to turn your phone onto airplane mode. And when you've got two phones and a Nexus 7, that's a lot of dings to turn off. Now I've not uh, been feeding the torque in, which is a bit naughty, so as we climb, as you know, we should have this on 1900 and something. That's why the speed's dropped off a bit. Um, but other than that, we're still we're going well. Now, what I'm going to do on the other screen is go to the Steam Apps Common X Plane. Aircraft, General Aviation, Carinado, Documentation, B200 Performance. Here we are. And this is the thing. This is the thing I did on the on the other video because we got up. We got up to about 24,000 feet, and it wasn't cruising at all well. And um, we couldn't work out why. And so what I had to do was resort to doing a bit of looking at the books. And here are the performance tables that come with the um, with the aircraft. What I'll do is I'll just we'll do this quickly and then pop back and just check that's still cruising okay. I assume that's working in the background. It's just a, there's ten thousand nine hundred. So we go over to here. Attend then yeah, it's still climbing in the background. Okay, that's fine. It'll level off at seventeen thousand. So now, what what are these what are these tables? Now, what you've got thirty two pages of spreadsheets here. The last page is slightly different. The first page is obviously the color pa cover page. So now, what are we looking at? Well, what it's doing is it's telling you what the settings should be, depending on various um, configurations. 
and there are there are a lot of variables on an aircraft there's the cruise power um, there's the outside temperature or, or the uh, yeah the, well, let's just say outside temperature to simplify things there's the torque that you've set plus the weight okay so let's just uh, a bit paranoid about this plane okay we'll get there we will get there so um, so what they do is <clears throat> what we want to know is so cruising at 24,000 feet and with a certain weight what power settings and what um, propeller settings do we need to set and here we've got normal cruise power and the only thing that's changing as I go through these tables is the temperature can you see that it starts off at minus 30 I'm going to try and zoom in, but are you are you seeing that? I say minus thirty. So that's international standard atmosphere. Minus thirty. So it's in other words, thirty degrees Celsius below the international standard atmosphere. Now the international standard atmosphere is fifteen Celsius. So you can see here, if I just do the table for the international standard atmosphere, you'll find that at sea level or surface level is fifteen degrees Celsius. And if we go to the one ISA minus or plus 10, it's 20, 25 degrees Celsius. So a lot depends on the temperature. We said the temperature at uh, surface level was 10 degrees, didn't we? So we're going to be stuck between this one, which is minus 10 and, and normal. So let's just choose the normal one for the sake of argument. And then, so what we do is, that's assuming 1700 RPM. Now there's a separate load of tables a bit further on for 1800 RPM. So that's maximum cruise power. This is norm normal cruise power. So for each RPM, th this is the propeller RPM. So for each propeller RPM, you've got two cruise powers, normal and maximum. Okay, so that's, that's 1800 RPM standard atmosphere, normal cruise power. And if I go down, we've got... 1800 RPM standard atmosphere maximum cruise power now okay now bear with me because we'll get to the let's just feed that torque in and we'll cruise along at uh, 17 flight level 170 for, for a minute while we're doing this there's no we can turn the landing lights off now can't we uh, let's go back to the what's it right so now what's the purpose for this? So what we want to do, we want to cruise along, let's say we're cruising along, let's say 18,000, 1800 RPM, 18,000 feet, and as temperature decreases as we go up, so we should expect the outside temperature to be about minus 21, is expecting us to set 2100 or 2119 on the torque, and then we should get a fuel flow of about 770 pounds per hour. Now that's in total for two engines. It says it up here to obtain fuel flow divided by two, so it's 330, 386 per engine, yeah, and that's assuming that we've, we're about 13,000 pounds all up. So what I intend to do is cruise at 24,000. So I'm going to go back to the plane and take us up to 24,000, and then we'll come back to the tables. So the way to get up to 24,000 is to Put us up to flight level 240 or near as whatever. You can see we've accelerated up there, can't you? Now, um, then we need to put ourselves in a climb, and it needs to be a bit of a steeper climb than that, let's say 1500. And I'm going to press altitude select because that's the only way I've found of getting it to level off at flight level 240. Well, that rustling is my poppy, by the way. So good. Yeah. So um, if you get too high in a plane and the, and and you get into air which is too thin, then the plane will fly propeller up, and that's because the propeller will, the plane will sit down on its tail, and the propeller will have to start dragging you through the air, and the propeller will have to try and contribute to the upward lift on the plane as well as the forward thrust. 
and you don't want that because you're sort of you end up flying it like a helicopter so what you need you need the wings to provide the lift and the propeller to provide the thrust so in order to do that you you, you flying in thin air is a good idea but flying in air that's non-existent it just doesn't work so what we were doing we were flying along about um, 160 knots and which is good because um, <clears throat> that just means that you're in thin air we're actually not doing 160 knots in fact if you look at the um, the ground speed indicator here you can see we're doing we're actually doing over the ground 230 knots now some of that could be the um, wind but in fact we've got no wind at all here wind zero at zero so in fact uh, 170 knots airspeed is translating to 226 knots over the ground and that's that's only because the air is so thin here so that it's not thick enough to push this dial up to the correct speed so but we don't mind that the one thing you have to bear in mind with a plane is that it it flies in the air and <laughs> okay. I know what I mean what I mean is what do I mean what I mean is I knew I knew what I meant and now I've forgotten what I meant now this is your fault you put me off but basically what I mean is it flies in the air so if the air is thin then it's it's flying relative to the air it's flying in that's what I think what I'm trying to say I'm sure there's a point there somewhere It'll come to me in a minute so we're still climbing at 160 in the air that's what I'm trying to say so so in fact although we, we may well be climbing at 200 knots in the air if you see what I mean if we're 200 knots over the ground in the air but we can't say oh well we are we actually at, we are going because we are going 211 knots we can cut the throttle even is really 160 it doesn't work like that this tells you the quality of the air if you like that you're flying through so you're always if it says 160 then that's 160 in the air so that's and the plane performs in the air so you need to know you need to sort of pay attention to this in terms of the performance of the aircraft not not the speed over the ground okay good I'm glad to squeeze that out the old toothpaste tube after a while Let's just zoom out a bit and see where we are. Where am I zooming in? That's better. Yeah, we're on our way. NC Newcastle. You get to know these after a while. I'm going to um, just uh, cut the descent down to 1200 because I don't really want to drop down much below 140 knots. As I say, once you start flying nose high, it's very difficult to level off and, and accelerate. You have to usually you have to nose down and dive a bit, and then climb, and then to get back up to where you were. So best not to get high and slow. High and slow, or and high and very fast, are two things that you don't want to get. <clears throat> now look, what idiots forgotten to feed the torque in? That's that's max. That's with my throttle right the way forward now. So and then presumably with these throttles right the way forward as well now. So uh, I'm uh, recording this to the hard drive, uh, the, the internal hard drive now. So we shouldn't run out of speed. It means that I'm going to have like a 20 gigabyte video file to edit, and I've been having trouble with the video files as well because um, I had a lot of synchronization problems between the sound and the audio sounds sound the video and the audio and um, I think it may be down to the fact that Premiere Pro doesn't handle video that's been recorded at a variable bit rate although the Ava Media card is supposed to record at a fixed bit rate 12 um, kilobits a second I think so I don't know whether that's necessarily the problem 
it's annoying because the video that I've recorded plays perfectly on VLC and it won't uh, and then yeah, I can't import it into a professional video editing program and the people that you talk to um, on the Adobe forums about whether or not it will you know what's the problem with variable bitrate they're just sort of very snotty and and say oh no that's that's consumers do that you know us us video professionals we all record at a constant bitrate we don't have to we don't have consumer grade equipment that that needs to compress video um, which is, is hardly a solution is it Adobe it's Premiere Pro Pro in a program usually means better than better than normal you know it means like as in professional as it's got more features it's more capable it can do more things it can do things that other programs can't do but no apparently with Premiere Pro it's the opposite Premiere Pro means if you're not a professional video you know if you're not in Hollywood then don't use it and and they they say as much you know they say that you shouldn't be using it you don't know what you're doing There's, can you imagine going on a forum and any other forum <laughs> and everyone will be really helpful and say yeah yeah sorry no I'm afraid it doesn't do that yet but we might do blah blah not Adobe Premiere Pro forum then I'm like oh no, no sorry you're obviously a pleb you know who uses variable bitrate <laughs> certainly not us professionals you know buy another program that's their solution that's their helpline so you you know shouldn't have bought our program should have bought another program that, that did that if it is a problem I can see myself going back to um, Sony Vegas but Sony Vegas was a lovely program and in terms of functionality I think head and shoulders above Premiere Pro but just a bit prone to crashing it's a bit of a pain anyway we're coming up to a waypoint there those of you who are sort of keeping your eye on the flight plan now what's the now what's the uh, what's the story let's just finish off with these uh, these tables shall we so here we've got we're flying at 24,000 feet we're doing let's just get a get my aviation pencil out and write all this down 24,000 feet or flight level 240 if you hear me say thousand feet then I'm wrong just pick me up on it will you just shout it's flight level 240 it's um we've got the torque is set at 1757 we've got the prop as uh, which is uh, at 2000 rpm and um, we've got uh, an airspeed of uh, 192 I've rounded that down so let's go back to the books and see what the books say about all this now first of all it says that in, in cruise power should be about 1800 rpm so that's on the props right Can you, so you remember that 1700 was the other one wasn't it so basically it's saying if you can have your props going around at 1700 rpm or you can have your props going around at 1800 rpm so that's that's your first choice so that's what a choice I'm now going to make that choice and I'm going to say we're going to have them going around at 1800 rpm so what we're going to do we're going to course the props by pressing F3 until we've got them going around at 1800 rpm And if you um, don't know if you can see all of this, but you, you'll see these levers going back. There we are. So, so 1800 up here. It's probably a little bit less. I'm going to do a little bit more. No, I'm going to do a little bit less because hopefully we're going to get a ring a bit more juice out of this baby, and the props will speed up as we speed up. So, so back to the books the stewardess in the back there 1800 rpm now what did we say the temperature was on the ground it was about 15 wasn't it so let's take the in in, in the, um, international standard atmosphere 15 celsius we know we know what the international standard pressure is don't we 29.91 1013 so and we've got that set so we're we're now need to read down to 24,000 feet <clears throat> and we should expect 
with the 1800 RPM set to have about 1739 on the torque and in fact we had 1757 didn't we so we're pretty well there and then the other thing is depending on the weight now I'm assuming that um, we <coughs> excuse me <coughs> let's assume that we're the heaviest we can be we're probably about somewhere between 12 and 13 thousand pounds so it's saying expect an indicated airspeed of 189 knots and in fact we had 192 didn't we so we're pretty well set up let's see what we've got we've got 195 so oh <laughs> that was worrying wasn't it it came in just saw that tipped over like that but in fact we've just made that left turn so at um let's just uh, find that a little bit so so at our um Talk's gone up a little bit, 1700 and something it wanted, didn't it? 1700. And so I'm just going to bring that back a little bit. Should have written those figures down, shouldn't I? Let's go back again. One last line. Last time, positively the last time we do this, okay. So, 24,000 feet. No, flight level 240, FS Derek. Outside air temperature minus 33, but the indicated outside air, air temperature should be about minus 25 if we're right. And then we should have the torque should be 1739 per engine, and we should have a fuel flow of 315 per engine, and we should have an indicated air speed, air speed of 189. Now I'm just before we go back I'm going to have a look at the other one which was for the 5 degrees which was standard atmosphere minus 10 24000 so there there we would have uh, things would be slightly higher we'd have a slightly higher torque slightly higher fuel uh, well about the same fuel flow and about 195 so everything would be a bit higher if it was a bit colder and that's true because aircraft do fly better in colder air so let's check that against our checklist. So flight level 240, correct. Outside air temperature, minus 25, <coughs> minus 35. Minus 35, well this could cause a rethink. If it could be that the uh, standard atmosphere is, is colder. Uh, I'm not gonna take you back to the lists again because you can, you know, you can use these lists yourself, get them printed off. But that's why you've got so many sheets, spreadsheets there. It's so that you can just set the plane up in the cruise to get the maximum efficiency out of it. 1739 on the torque, we've got 1746. We should have about uh, 315 um, uh, pounds per hour going through the fuel and we've got 308 so so we're pretty well there aren't we and we should have 189 knots um, and we've got 193 so in fact that the plane is slightly overperforming what we'd expect and I would imagine that temperature is the is the answer to that because we're at minus 35 instead of minus 25 planes love um, cold weather and when um, people, you know, when you go flying and it's in its in its like lovely hot sunny day, barbecue weather and everything, and people say to you, "Oh, you know, what a lovely day to fly," what you know, what a lovely day to go flying, and you think, actually, no, it's not. It's a, it's a terrible day to go flying because you'll have you'll probably have an inversion layer, which wears all the pollution is all trapped on the ground because as 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 the um, cold air and warm air fronts collide what happens is the um, the warm air tends to climb up and over the cold air because it's less dense and so you get a situation where as you climb instead of the air getting colder as you go up it gets warmer as you go up and um, because of that any pollution that's trapped in the cold air can't escape because it can't rise and so you get a situation where the pollution is very bad on the ground <coughs> excuse me and um, 
you get an inversion layer, literally because it's inverted. So instead of getting cold as you go up, it gets warm as you go up. So you get lots of pollution and very, very poor visibility and everybody's on the ground coughing. And what you can do is you can actually fly up through the inversion layer and you can see it. It's, like a, it's literally like a fog, a complete blanket. And you're up in clear air and everybody on the ground is in, in, uh, <coughs> in really, really poor visibility and poor... Uh, condition all the particulates, all the car pollution, and everything, lorry pollution is all trapped on the ground. So um, no, so you want to fly in, and also um, the more dense the air, the more lift. So uh, if you're trying to take off, for example, you'd, you'd much rather take off. Obviously, you'd want to take off into a headwind, but on a hot day, there's almost always no wind. There's hardly a stiff breeze, is there, on a hot day? Uh, it's usually airless and so what's happening is you're taking off in um in a situation where the air is very thin and there's no headwind and so you're really sometimes you're really sort of quite concerned about whether or not you're going to get off the end of the runway let's just check the pressurization yeah we're up to um there we are so we're at uh, 25,000 feet external and um, let me zoom in just in case you're watching this on your mobile so we're about 24, 25,000 feet external and about um, seven and a half, uh, sorry, eight and a half internal. And that's set by this. Um, no, I've actually altered it there, so let's not alter it. It's actually um, 24, it's telling me it should depressurize it to about 5,000. So, and we're, we're actually stabilized. This is the air in, air out. I think we may be turning again. No. No. Okay. So. Yeah. So um, if you want to go flying, go flying on a day where there's a nice stiff breeze and uh, it's um, it's pretty cold. Ten degrees Celsius. Perfect. There is a way um, of working out the pressure altitude, um, and if I remember correctly, it's you subtract the um, Q and H. The the um, or the QFE, which is the regional pressure setting from the industry, the, the uh, international standard atmosphere. So, say it's say your Q and H is one zero one eight, and you subtract one zero one three, so you get five, and then you multiply it by the change in pressure per uh, change in the heights per millibars. So you've got there's a five millibar difference, and you can convert that to a height by convert by 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 multiplying it by something two hundred. Uh, some number that's in the hundreds it escapes me for the timing, but it's a good calculation if you are a pilot and you do go flying. <coughs> work out how many feet per millibar. Actually, I wonder if we could do it. We could probably experiment on here, couldn't we? Wouldn't be very clever because we're going to go all over the place. Let's just try it though. Come on. Ah, oh, what could possibly go wrong? We're a thousand. We're a thousand and thirteen millibars. Let's wind three millibars off and see how many feet it changes, shall we? We've got to do it before the plane descends. <laughs> so ready, ready. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two. Oh, that three. Well, that didn't change much, did it? Let's try it again. We'll wind a few more off. I'll wind ten off. I'll go down to ten thousand. I'll go down to a thousand and a thousand and three. Are you ready? It won't be accurate, but it'll give us a good idea. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Oh, 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 three. It was about um it's about two hundred and fifty feet, isn't it? Not a good idea to do this in real life. Anyway, I'll um, I'll we'll look, look it up. You can look it up. Yeah, and anyway, what that does is that tells you what what the pressure altitude is on the ground, and if it's um, lower than the actual altitude, then you're laughing. If it's higher, then um, then you're taking off uh, as though you were always already sort of up in the air, which is um, means that you know you're taking off into thin air, which is not so good. Right. Okay, one last thing I'm going to do, what I'll probably do is uh, just work this out and then I'll see you at the other end of the cruise. And that is I'm going to do the usual direct to 
um, the destination just to give me a quick reckoning of um, let's get it there and mouse wheel up once mouse wheel up one more enter activate Right, and as you know, this is distance, desired track, bearing, estimated time on route, track, and ground speed. So distance 195 nautical miles, um, and we're flying. We're flying at 195, uh, 195 nautical miles. Uh, we're flying. Yeah, we're flying at 195 um, nautical miles an hour. Anyway, I'm not 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 is a nautical mile an hour. Anyway, so literally, we're about an hour away. The ground speed here 277 mirrors the ground speed that you can read here. This is just a quick way of referring to it. The desired track to that waypoint direct is 142 which is 3 degrees to the left. Our actual track is 145 and that's because we're not flying the direct track, we are flying the flight plan track which is probably slightly to the right. Um, and the uh, uh, the bearing to us is 142 because we're heading in the way that we're flying. <clears throat> I think there's a situation where it might be like a, on a bearing of 270 but on a track of 142 because you need to um, uh, turn left. And lastly, estimated time on route, 41 minutes. Yes, now now that's interesting you see now I've made an error there and have I? distance 189 ground speed 277 <coughs> yeah excuse me the mistake I made and I'm perhaps you noticed was that it was 188 and I said we were flying at 188 so it was going to be about an hour but in fact that's our airspeed and we're actually moving over the ground this the um, the distance is the distance over the ground and that's why it's compared to our ground speed you can see that they are conveniently located together in pairs aren't they so that's the distance and the ground speed distance over the ground speed over the ground so that's where we're getting the 40 minutes from and you see how I said an hour and that said 40 minutes and what you mustn't do is you mustn't just think oh um, you know one of one of those is wrong You've got to work out which one. Um, and in this case it was me. <laughs> so we're going to be there in 40 minutes. Okay, so as soon as we're 80 miles away we're going to need to start to descend, aren't we? Because um, we're, we're at 24,000 feet and 3 eighths are 24. So if you remember, uh, we have to take this number here and divide by 3 and it tells us how many miles. So divide the flight level by three and it gives you the number of miles away to start descending at roughly f f 1500 feet a minute. One one peculiar thing about aviation and it may be in other fields as well but it doesn't most other fields work in units and thousands and millions and then thousand millions or billions if you're, depending if you're American or English and um, but in aviation they work in hundreds quite frequently work in hundreds and you'll see lots and lots and lots of things that are in hundreds so like for example here look we've got um, foot pound times a hundred so you've got 18 1800 they could they could have that 1.8 and then foot pounds times a thousand couldn't they so they could say like it's it's 18 you could say it's 1800 because it's 1 1.8 thousand but no, they use 18 and 100. OK, well, that's fair enough. I suppose that makes it a bit more legible. Um, here again, RPM, 18, 18 by 100. Here again, 8 by 100. Flight levels, not not flight level 24.0, decimal zero. No, flight level 240, 100. Um, so just be aware of that. And there are all sorts of things in aviation are hundreds. And, and I personally I'm not a big fan of that because I think the trouble is you're no we're not used to dealing in hundreds we're used to dealing in thousands aren't we just zoom back out again 
Um, and even the fuel quantity is in a hundred. I can see why they've done it because it, it most of the time, most of the figures are easily expressed in hundreds. And I know again in America it's quite natural to say twelve hundred or fifteen hundred. You wouldn't say one thousand five hundred. Probably in Europe, more likely to say one thousand eight hundred rather than eighteen hundred or twenty four hundred. That's but but uh, in aviation that's very um, normal. Right, that's it for the time being. I'll, um, yeah, that's good. So we covered most of what we lost in the Iceland trip uh, on this, and so uh, what I'll do is I'll say um, cheerio for now, and uh, let's just let's just have a quick look around and check everyone's all right in the back. I haven't really spoken to them, have we? Let's get this door open. How is everybody? All right. Yeah really good. Don't forget you can turn the lights on if you like and wiggle them about. There we are. I'm doing this all um, left handed. Remember the trick to shut the door? Cockpit door and then you have to press it again because it doesn't, when it opens it doesn't register that it's opened here. Now I have the joystick on the right hand side and the mouse in my left hand so the uh, mousing is uh, is a bit clumsy sometimes, sorry about that. Anyway we're fine, we're cruising along nicely, I'm going to go and get the stewardess to make me a cup of coffee and we've got uh, 160 miles to go so I'll see you in about 80 miles time.